Hey everyone, I'm back with another haul video. Um, I have been doing a little bit of vinyl shopping over the past couple of weeks. Um, I visited two record stores um, that I hadn't been to before and I ordered a bunch of stuff online. Um, I've been really busy, so <clears throat> I thought I'd do a quick haul video. Um, since I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling over the next uh, month or so, and I'm probably going to be picking up a lot more records. So, um, last weekend, um, I went to Philadelphia to see Frankie Cosmos live. Um, Eskimo and Yowler opened for her. Um, and I, I stayed with a friend in New Jersey, and uh, she wanted to take me to a couple of record stores. So the first record store that we went to was Inner Groove Records um, in New Jersey. And um, they had a lot of great stuff. Um, I was trying not to spend a lot of money, so I wanted to kind of look for some different stuff that I couldn't get anywhere else. Uh, and um, they have a lot, it's mostly used records. They do have a small section of new stuff, but it's mostly used, um, which is cool. And I actually, the first record that I found that I wanted to get was this Olympics record. Um, this is the 1984 Olymp uh, Los Angeles Olympics. Um, I love Olympic stuff. I'm a huge fan of the Olympics. Mostly, um, I really, really love the Winter Olympics more than anything, but I, I enjoy the Summer Olympics as well. Um, so I love usually like the theme songs and stuff that they do. So I picked this one up. This is cool. Um, it's got, it's a gatefold. So it's pretty neat. Um, records in great shape. So yeah, I was excited to pick this one up. I actually don't have any like Olympic records. They're, they're a bunch that I'd like to get. So this is my first one. So pretty excited about that. I thought that was cool. Um, the second thing I picked up was just kind of like a weird gamble. Um, I saw this and saw that it was um, still sealed. It's a like Maxell rock sampler. Um, and it was sealed and I looked at the back and I was like, oh, this is just so cool with like the tapes and the A track. And I was like, well, it's gotta be, you know, probably very, probably very early 80s, probably around 80 or 81. Um, but I didn't really know what was on it. it. Doesn't have a track listing on the back, but I was like, I'll take a chance on it anyway. It was only a few bucks. Um, so it's a gatefold when I opened it up. It's got like all the different songs and the artists that are in here. Um, and it's got a, a bunch of different stuff. It's it's kind of cool. Um, I Yeah, I don't really know a lot about some of these bands, um, but then others I do like uh, Hall & Oates and Alan Parsons Project and stuff like that. But one um, one band that I kept seeing a lot of discs for in Philly was this band called The Straubs, um, which I actually don't know their stuff. So um, and I was thinking, oh, I should probably check it out considering they're, I keep coming across it. So it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it was just a gamble, but I actually just wanted to get it because I thought it was neat. I, I love like old cassette tape stuff and Maxell stuff and just all that great, um, sort of nostalgic stuff. And I think it's in, uh, maybe in high fidelity. Oh, my cat's trying to, yeah. <laughs> um, my cats have to ruin every video. Um, <laughs> I think it's in High Fidelity where he's got like this big Maxell poster in the back or something. So um, yeah, so that was just a gamble just for a few bucks. And then something I'm really excited about. Um, <laughs> this is so cool. Um, this is a die cut um, Hanukkah record. And it's crazy because it's like from um, 1981 and it's Gefilte Joe and the Fish. And uh, yeah, it's called Hanukkah Rocks. And it says it's by the only, the world's only senior citizen Jewish rock band. I mean, look at it in like the center label. Isn't that cool? It's still sealed. I haven't opened it yet. Um, it's just awesome. But I'm going to put a link uh, at the bottom of this video. There is someone on YouTube who opened who has one that's opened and spins this tune. It's so great. So we've got all sorts of stuff. Like you got Hanukkah Rocks, uh, Walk on the Kosher Side. You've got Matzah Man and Napper's Delight. So I could not pass this up. I mean, it's so cool. Um, I think it's gonna be very much like, it's it, it's very much in the style of um, like n n sort of newer like Jewish bands like the Weavies who sing some really excellent hysterical songs about 
um, Hanukkah and stuff. They have a, an album called, I think it's called Hanukkah Rocks. Or not Hanukkah Rocks, but um, I don't remember what it's called actually, but they sing a, a whole lot of great songs. So I was really excited about picking this up. Um, this is actually my first um, like shaped vinyl. Uh, so that is awesome, Star David. Really cool, really excited. <clears throat> that was a great job. I'd definitely go back there again if I was in the area uh, to see what I could find. Um, so that night, went to see Frankie Cosmos and Eskimo and Yowler, and Yowler had cassette tapes but sold out by the end of the show, so I didn't manage to get one. Um, but I did get my hands on um, this uh, flexi disc, which is for Eskimo. It's actually a postcard um, that's a flexi disc, which is awesome. So this is my first real flexi disc that I've ever gotten, and it's just a paper postcard one. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's got a download card with, or a download code with it and stuff. And um, yeah, it's it's awesome. I'm I'm really excited about that. Um, it's really cool. And I I don't really have any Eskimo on vinyl, but I hope to solve that problem uh, eventually. This is my first Eskimo vinyl, but I'm excited about it. So I picked this up while I was at the show, <clears throat> and then my cat is ripping on things. I'm not really sure why. <sighs> so, <laughs> um, the next day we went to Repo Records in Philly. Um, it's a pretty well known store. I'd, I'd heard a lot about it before we went. Um, it was pouring rain, which kind of sucked, but it was um, it was really cool to, to go in and check that place out. They have a ton of great vinyl, and then in the basement they've got a bunch of really, really cheap, like dollar vinyl. Um, so, I picked up some new stuff and I got some used stuff as well. Um, the first thing I picked up, um, it's sort of almost a crime that I did not have this album, uh, before, but this is, um, this is XX Rips. Uh, I love this band and I love this album so much. Um, it's so great. The videos are just fantastic. Um, I, I really, really dig this album. It's so kind of like throwback to the 80s. It's just... It's excellent, excellent music. Really good, great for just, you know, it's all really fast and poppy and it's fantastic. So um, I finally got <laughs> a hold of this album. Um, so it's kind of cool. I like the center label too. I haven't put anything, <clears throat> I haven't actually had time since I went to put things in good sleeves. So uh, forgive the paper sleeves still. But uh, yeah, so really excited to pick that one up. I. I Every time I go to a record store, well not every time, but most places I end up seeing this record, but it's always after I've already got a whole stack of other ones in my hand that um, that I can't get other places. And I'm always like, well, I can wait on X Hex, that's fine. Um, but it was kind of silly that I had not gotten it yet, so I'm so happy I picked this one up. Uh, really excited. I listened to this one a lot uh, this week. Um, <clears throat> and the next thing I got was... Um, Washed Out, uh, Life of Leisure. Uh, this is more of like an EP. Um, it's just got a handful of songs on it. Uh, but this is one that's been on the want list for a while. Um, and actually, my friend wanted, she had it in her hands and she was going to get it. And then uh, she decided at the last minute not to. And so I, I said, well, I am going to buy it then. So, um, yeah, so I'm happy to pick this one up. And I only listened to this one once this week. But, um, you know, it's good. It's pretty good. Um, obviously, <clears throat> uh, the most recognizable tune on this one is the Portlandia theme song. Um, so I, I really dig that, but uh, the other tracks are great as well. So I was excited to get this one. Um, and that's all I got for new vinyl. The rest was just um, some dollar bin choices. Um, I got uh, Joan Armitrading. Um, I love her, and this is, you know, obviously, like, uh, this one was 1980, um, so uh, it's probably uh, a little, it's a little more 80s, you know, pretty, I don't know, early 80s, sort of, uh, I don't know, easy listening kind of bordering on, um, but there's some really good, really good tunes on this, um, so I was really excited to pick this one up, because I, I love Joan. Um, and I don't have any of her albums, so this is the first one I picked up. 
Um, yeah, and it's in it's in really great shape and everything. So just a little ring wear and stuff, but that's fine. So I picked this one up, and then these are actually more for my spouse than me. Uh, Phoebe Snow. Uh, I got two Phoebe Snow albums. I actually don't know Phoebe's stuff all that well. I think I've only listened to a couple of songs, so I'm actually looking forward to sort of getting to know um, her catalog a little bit better. So pick these up in the dollar bin as well. And the last one is just a, a guilty pleasure. Boy George, everything I own and use me, seven inch. Um, I've got some, some Culture Club Boy George records that my parents got me. <clears throat> um, I think Boy George was probably the first, like one of the first um, like artists I ever really, really loved. Um, back in the day, I, you know, I was of course into stuff like, um, you know, Debbie Gibson and all that nonsense, but Boy George, I had a very special place in my heart for Boy George. So, uh, so yeah, so I picked this one up as well. It's in good condition. Um, <clears throat> so the rest of the, actually, I got one more, this I actually found yesterday, um, when I was out flea marketing, uh, there's this flea market that I love to go to, they have tons and tons of records, but it's almost always, it's usually just like really horrible condition classical albums, and you know, stuff like Jim Neighbors and Andy Williams, and uh, you know, you just find like an overabundance of, of like old time, easy listening stuff that's not that great. So, um, but I managed to come across this, which is the soundtrack for Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And it's really in gorgeous condition. I mean, the cover has like no ring wear. It's really beautiful. And what's really cool is, um, it's got, you know, I, I thought, okay, well, it's just, you know, a single record. Um, but I was like, oh, well, it's cool gatefold. Okay, well that's awesome. So I've got the record, but then I noticed in the front half of the gatefold that there was this little seven inch slipped in. And it's it's only got recording on half of it, and the back half is blank. Um, but I was like, oh, that's cool. It's not even listed on the back. So I thought that was kind of neat that it's this little bonus seven inch that was in there. And um, yeah, and everything's in great shape and I got this record for 75 cents so um yeah I can't really complain about that especially because that place is usually not great for finding records occasionally I find some cool old, like stuff I mean I love old stuff too so like you know I dig like Mario Lanza for just it's just so the music is just really crazy good like it's so it's so bad it's good um <laughs> and he was actually a fantastic singer so like i pick stuff like that up you know there but um i usually don't find anything like that anybody would really really want um but yeah i was excited to found this one find this one especially because lately i've been um, realizing that i really need to increase the number of soundtracks in my um portfolio and, and the thing is um most of the soundtracks that i want to get are like 80s 90s movies that are just sort of like nostalgic things for me and um, looking online, it's like most of these didn't come out in anywhere but like South Korea. Uh, for some reason, man, South Korea really digs their soundtracks because it's like the US didn't release them, but South Korea did. So it's kind of hard to find a lot of the soundtracks that I'm looking for, but um, yes, yeah, so this is a good one because I love John Williams. So this is cool. Pick this one up. Um, and then I, speaking of soundtracks, one that I decided, I was like, oh, you know, I really love the movie Reality Bites, and I want to get that soundtrack. Um, and I'm looking online, and I'm like, wow, man, these things are going for, like, a ridiculous amount of money, really hard to find in, like, you know, 2015, you know, reissue, and it's just, you know, crazy amounts of money. Um, and I'm like, why? Why is it so expensive? Um... And then I just happened to look around on Google a little. I'm like, oh, Urban Outfitters still has them for 25 bucks. Um, so I'm not really sure why people are selling them um, for hundreds, um, the 2015 one. So yeah, so I got it right from Urban Outfitters, which I normally don't like to support Urban Outfitters. Um, I have a lot of problems with them as a company and I don't like to buy my vinyl there, but this was pretty much the only way I was gonna get a copy of this that was at a reasonable price. So, Reality Value Soundtrack, love this one, really excited, I haven't even opened it yet. Um, so, looking forward to giving this a listen. 
Um, and then some other things that I ordered, um, I got, the first thing I got, which I've been wanting, um, I love Sufjan Stevens. I just love his stuff so much, um, but I actually don't own any of it. So I decided, you know, when that, when it, they were announcing that they were going to have the 10th anniversary um, edition of Illinois come out and it's going to have the star shaped Chicago demo. Um, I really wanted to get it and they were sold out on um, Asthmatic Kitty's website and uh, sold out in a bunch of different places, but luckily Amoeba came through and I got myself a copy of it. And this is just beautiful. Oh, I love this album so much. I've been listening to it constantly since I bought it. Um, and it's just gorgeous. I mean, the artwork on this album is incredible. Um, beautiful, beautiful gatefold. Um, and then of course you've got the vinyl, which itself is really incredible looking. So I'm gonna show you those pieces. Again, I haven't put these into um, my good sleeves yet but um the first is white vinyl um and i mentioned this before but i really dig white vinyl so this is really really beautiful um i had read <clears throat> some people complained about the center being punched um off center so that the record doesn't spin properly but um i mine luckily i don't have any problems with them um so I was happy about that. I was a little nervous picking it up because some people complained about that, but I haven't had any problems. Um, and mine looks really good. So uh, I'm thrilled about that because I didn't want to have to like return it and try to get another copy. Um, the second record is this really beautiful, beautiful marble blue, which I love. It's so gorgeous. Really, really love it. <clears throat> And then of course you've got the star-shaped Chicago demo, which I'm sure probably a lot of people have seen, but I'm gonna uh, bring it out anyway. And here it is. It's really cool. Um, it's actually like shaped pretty similar to the uh, it's the same basically the same mold as the uh, Hanukkah record that I have so um, this is great I really this whole album is so fantastic I'm really really happy that I decided to uh, to go ahead and grab one um, while I still could um, while they're still available so I'm excited to have that and got to move on and get some more of his stuff because he's just um, I really really enjoy his music a lot and um, yeah, now that I've been listening to this all the time, I'm, I'm really hooked. So I picked that one up. Um, and something that I can't believe I didn't get this on vinyl before, but um, The Tragically Hip, now for Plan A. Um, I really love this album. This one came out in 2012. Um, and it's a, I really enjoy this album a lot, and especially because um, Sarah Harmer, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite artists, probably my most favorite artist, um, guested on two of the songs for this for this album. Um, now for Plan A, which is the the title track, and um, and the Look Ahead. Um, and I love this album; it's fantastic. And I was really excited. Man, this is on really, really beautiful vinyl. Um, the the inner sleeve is really high quality, gorgeous. I love the design on it. I think it's really cool. Um, and then it's on, I believe this is 180. It's really, really nice, nice, thick, heavy vinyl. Um, I really love the center labels on this. Really cool. Um, so yeah, I don't know why it took me so long to, to think about getting this one on vinyl. Um, and, uh, it was <clears throat> tough to find a copy. Um, but I went on Amazon and found, um, you know, some, some copies on there so pick that one up and I think the last few things I got to show you okay so this is really cool um, this is a seven inch it's um, acapella uber, uber Alice and um, it's from the Blue Ribbon Glee Club and this is um, a Glee Club that covers punk songs 
And the reason I got this one was specifically because it has Slater Kinney's words and guitar on it. I mean, how cool is that, right? Um, these were limited to 500, so they're numbered. And the vinyl is just such an awesome color, too. Really, really love it. Isn't that awesome? It's like this great blue, green, gray sort of marbled. Um, really cool. It's awesome. Um, these guys, there are videos online of them performing live and stuff, so definitely check it out. Um, I just thought that was so cool that it's an a cappella group doing words and guitar. I mean, that's, that's such a heavy hitting, hard song. Um, and yeah, it's really, really cool. So pick this one up. I got this one online. So excited to get that. Um, and then <clears throat> a couple of, I don't collect cassette tapes, but, <laughs> um, when there's something that's only available on cassette, you kind of have to get it if you really love it. So the first thing I, I got was this. Um, Saddle Tramps were a Toronto band. Um, they were active in the 80s and 90s. And um, Sarah Harmer was part of the group for a couple of years. Um, and we have two of the other cassettes and she sings on both of those. Um, and I didn't even know that there was a little EP that was put out um, in between those two albums. Um, this one came out in 1989. Um, so when I saw this come up online, I had to go ahead and get it. And I've listened to it and it's just fantastic. I love it. Um, I just love Sarah's voice and her voice was so different in the 80s. Um, you know, it's just excellent, excellent. So um, this one is so cool because it's like almost kind of like handmade labels um, for the cassette tape. It's just one-sided. Um, and like this little hand-drawn, um, like you can still see the lines from the cutout and everything. Um, on the cassette tape. So I got this. I'm happy I picked that one up. <clears throat> and then um, I got this band. Uh, it's a band out of Seattle. They were just around for a little while. Um, part man, part horse. Um, and they had a couple of um, things put out. But yeah, I picked up the cassette tape. I actually got this in the mail today. Um, so I'm excited about that. These were limited to a hundred, um, and numbered. So mine's 51 out of a hundred. Um, yeah. And I actually haven't really heard all the songs on here. So I'm excited to, to give put this one in the tape deck soon and, uh, and give it a shot. So pick that up. Um, and then the greatest thing, um, and probably one of the most expensive things I've bought recently um, is this cassette, Motor Goat. Motor Goat is pre-Quasi-Quasi. Quasi. Uh, it's Sam, Sam Coombs and Janet Weiss. Um, this, you know, it's just sort of like a, a small project. It wasn't around very long. They put out a cassette tape, um, a seven inch, maybe two seven inches. Um, I can't remember, but... <clears throat> But I have been dying to get my hands on something Motor Goat. It's very hard to find. Um, so when this came up on eBay, I bid myself silly getting this cassette tape. Um, I had to have this. I'm so excited that I got it. Um, it's just so cool. I mean, I you know I love Quasi so much, um, and I definitely had to get this this cassette tape. So. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's a totally different sound than Quasi. It doesn't sound anything like Quasi, um, but it's still the same people behind it. It was such a small little project um, out of Portland, and I had to get this cassette, so I'm so happy I managed to get my hands on this one. This is probably one of my favorite purchases um, of, of the year so far, um, like right behind the Slater Kinney box set, I would say. So really excited to pick this one up as well. And yeah, that's uh, that's what I've got. I've definitely got a lot of stuff um, over the last little while. So, um, and I should be getting some some other stuff coming along pretty soon. And uh, like I said, I'll be doing a lot of traveling over the next um, four to six weeks. So I hope to have um, a lot more videos for you guys coming up. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'm sure I'll be posting again soon. Take care.